and then we will know more. Um, of course, it was in that moment a shock. Oh my God, um, what's it? Couldn't see that it was like hit by something like this high intense and then um, going down. You have these kind of hamstring injuries different way, but you still felt it and we all know how how rarely Mo goes off or needs to go off. Um, and so there's definitely something um, and we will see. But, but I have not more information right now. It's not a situation where you have to send your medical staff over to the clinic? Yeah, we will see. That depends on the diagnosis. We have to uh, will be ultrasound and we will do MRI and then we will know what it is and then we will see. What, what Egypt plans, yeah, but that's too early, sorry. For the other injured players, is there any positive news as well? We saw Christian Bandy Robertson training over in Dubai. <laughs> How's training Alexander-Arnold as well? Obviously, he can walk on the catwalk. And we're a funny stuff. So, um, uh, no, yeah, they're all positive, but not ready. So, but they're all going in the right direction and um, we're getting closer and closer and closer and some of them might be in kind of part of team training next week. So for the Bournemouth game, I don't expect anybody back um, from there. I hope that nobody will be out until then. Um, but after Bournemouth, I think, um, especially after, f maybe for Fulham, we will see um, how, they, how the boys do. But they're all close. Trent close, Tom close. Robo close. Who else? Who else? Dom. Dom. I said Dom. Yeah. Uh, again, Dom. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should. You should hear it. That's true. Um, and and um, so it's all, go all going in the right direction. That's all positive. But for the weekend's game, no. It's probably a measure of how well the squad has done. The fact that you've got the opportunity to go five points clear. Sounds relatively simple to say you can go five points clear, but it's, it's more difficult than that against a side that's won seven of the last nine in all competitions, only lost one in that time, just Spurs. And that was a tricky game, was Spurs. Um, yeah, they're good. And it's just kind of when you don't play them at the weekend, I, I really have time to admire that mm. what he's doing there. So it was um, obviously a really difficult start um, for him at Bournemouth with the manager change and you know, all these kind of things which you. I didn't know a lot about him, about a colleague, and then um, you, the start of the season, obviously the results, might, if you don't have a pr proper look at Bournemouth, it can happen. Um, but they turned it around, wow. Uh, that's, real, that's real coaching, I have to say. And he found a way to set this team up, and they, they have a really good mix. Um, they play football in the fine direction in the right moments. They use Tom Solonke in a sensational way, the support he gets from the center, from the wings, the way they defend, really good, really compact. Um, so that's proper. That will be a difficult game, definitely. But um, I don't think they are now preparing the game against us and think, thank God Liverpool is coming, um, because we feel good as well. And um, I, want to, that I want us to show that as well. So um, we are ready for tough games in the Premier League. Can't remember the last match day when, when it was not tough. Um, Probably because it never happened, um, and so no problem with that. But they have my respect, definitely. Okay. Morning, Paul. Hi. You mentioned Solanke there. Yeah. Had a great season. Um, I wonder what you make of his um, development as a Premier League goal scorer after he obviously struggled. For no, the I'm year. so happy for Dom because when we signed him, um, we were all so excited about the talent he is, and um, that he has so much potential, or had so much potential when, we, when he came here. But then it's Liverpool, and then we had other good strikers as well. And he had played games and, and everything. It uh, was probably not the, the, at that time not the most clinical yet, um, but he was, it's the, the talent was obvious. And then made how it is sometimes. Uh, made the absolute right decision to go to Bournemouth, went there through all different stages. Um, and last year already scored enough goals, and now he's obviously up there with the, with the greatest and um, that's absolutely I'm, I'm so happy for him because he's a wonderful kid and a wonderful and a real talent and a really good player and um, yeah he did it he won the hard way um, trying here realizing hmm, maybe a bit too early and then going to Bournemouth and, and do it all the way is really cool. <coughs> Last season, you concede the first goal quite often, 
is that something, though, that you specific, planned. specifically looked at to address? Is there anything that you, that you look at? No. No. I actually don't like to talk too much about negative things. <laughs> if it's not necessary, so like doing that. Let's turn it around, start in our mind with being one nil down, then we don't have to concede it really. So um, I don't know how that works. Um, no, I wish we wouldn't, to be honest. Uh, but it happened, it was all di for different reasons and different situations. And um, in the end, we play 95, 98 minutes, sometimes 100. And the result we have then is the most important. And um, reacting on the things that happen in a game, because it must not always lead to a goal, but it can be a good spell of the opponent, a better start of the opponent. Uh, they are more aggressive, they are more this, more that, and then you have still to turn it around. So that you cannot see it on a score sheet, but it's still something you have to do. And um, So the difference is not that big, actually. Um, but playing convincingly 90-odd minutes away from home is definitely something we want to do. No doubt about that. Um, and now we go to a place where that, in particular, will be pretty difficult, because they just have their own idea and have a re are in a really good moment. And um, that's why. We play better a really good football game. Mike? Jürgen, uh, real signs <coughs> over the past few games of Luis Diaz finding his form again. I know he's had a tough time injury wise and, and personal difficulties as well. What do you think's enabled him to, to get back to something like his best? And there's also the potential in the absence of Mo Salah to, to maybe use him on the right hand side. He's mainly been employed coming in off the left. You might all for have forgotten, but in the past, it is um, maybe the best front three this club had for a long, long time with Sadio Mane, Bobby Firmino, and Mo Salah. How often we were sitting here discussing about the, 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 the little crisis and little dip in form and stuff like this of one of the three. Now he's not, and he's not, and others stepped in, and we discussed it, but it never really had that massive impact. So in these times, we we let them just be because the players. Act. I don't have if if Lucha is not playing great. I don't have to tell him. By the way, Lucha as well is not great. He knows that before I know it. Um, and so it's just about um, trust and and faith and um, and time. And there was no, no doubt about that. This um, that he will be back um, definitely. And for, yes, that's for us very important. Um, absolutely. Um, but it's how it is. So the, 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 in, in general, we were not so far. We were not struggling in creating, and not really struggling in scoring. We can say we could have scored here more or there, but in other situations we were lucky when we scored. So we should maybe be we should have been denied in these moments. It's how it is. It's a general trust and faith what we have in the boys, and that's how we live it. And that's why they can have a spell where for two, three, four weeks maybe, after the most challenging time of his life where nobody is prepared for um, and he's back, that's good and um, pretty helpful. You can see it in each training session, it's different. Um, I spoke here and brought here, the, the, when, he's, when he came here, it was really, never saw something like that. He cannot not smile when he's on the ball. There was a beginning like that and there was a few weeks where I missed that a little bit, the smile is back. So that's really good. How impressed have you been recently with the form of <coughs> Virginia Canarte? And, and in particular, you look at games like at the Arsenal match where he, he was absolutely monstrous at the back. True. I'm not too impressed, to be honest. It's just what I expect from him because that's what he is able to do. I thought our last line in particular did really well all, on all positions. Sure, Kwanza did exceptionally well. Virtual is in a great, plays a great season. Um, Trent Joe Gomez, so it's really that's all. But you cannot, we, we, are, we are in this moment in time, we are for top of the table. So, how could you get, can you get there if the boys are not uh, performing on a pretty high level? So, um, but for us, it's essential. Um, of all the numbers you have over a season, most of them you can kind of ignore, forget the number of goals conceded, you never can ignore. So that's all about, and of course that's not Ibu Kunate, Virts van Dijk, Roy Kwanza, Joe Gomez, Joel Matip, or whatever. Um, that's the whole team, and this is the thing we have to keep in our mind. That everything starts with a top defense, uh, and a top defensive idea, and a common defensive idea. And um, from that, or from that, if that's good, or 
really good or, or super good, then you can start playing football and think about that. But without stability, you shouldn't even try. Yeah, top, was top. Um, today's the third session already since we are back, so um, you could see everybody was, was really important to everybody, for everybody, yeah. only from my personal point of view, had four days, it's perfect, um, absolutely. Nobody wanted to have three, four weeks, we are in the middle of a season, we love what, we, what, what happened so far, we are looking forward to what's coming up, um, but these four days um, were, were just top class. And um, so, but now we are also the third day um, in training again, and you can see um, the boys as as much as they like going on holiday. The thing they like the most is actually playing football, and that's that's really cool to see. And um, yeah, then the weather was good. It was freezing cold, obviously, but it was really nice going outside. Blue sky, even when it's freezing, um, it, yeah, was exactly like it should be. And that's now we have had a break, and now we can go for the rest of the season. No, I didn't speak to him after that. But I'm happy for him because it looks like he's happy, and that's the most important thing to me. Um, and I think it's absolutely. From, from time to time, I forget that I actually don't read. <laughs> Um, these kind of stories, but when it's not about us directly, so I read a little bit, and I said, well, people are really critical with Hendo about the move first there, then um, now coming back and all these kind of things. I don't know how we dare always judging these kind of things, all of us. With, with what's about it's We have one life, and we have to make decisions, and sometimes our decisions are perfect in the first place, and sometimes they have, that feels different when you after you made them. So... He was there, and it's one hundred percent interesting experience. I spoke to him. Um, Ninety-nine percent of what football-wise, what happened there was absolutely fine. It was it's the start of something, and it's not like it is here. Imagine it would be immediately like that. Um, many things to develop in the future, but ne never really critical or saying, "Ah, oh, that's not possible that they that, they are, that that's not there or whatever." But then he f he thought it's better for him and the family to come back to Europe, and now he's here, and he found with Ajax Amsterdam a sensational club. A sensational club in a difficult moment who can need for sure. Ajax always played the best football when they combined their real talent, what's always there, with some experience. And that's obviously now um, rather the job of Hendo, um, being part of that experience group. And then you can go there and from, from fifth place in, in Holland, you can make steps um, and in, in, the, in the table. And it's all positive and it's, it's an experience. And only in England, the, the people think it's... Why do they go abroad and stuff like this? All other countries want to come to England. So it's, it's, as, as beautiful this country is, it's lesser the reason. It's just they want to make international experience, stuff like this. It was for me the same. And now he's going to Holland um, where he can enjoy his football. Definitely, again, where the family will be, feel wonderful because the city is absolutely outstanding. Um, and I'm s very happy for him, and I will definitely talk to him. But so far in these few days now, I thought he has something more important, a few things to do, which are more important. Last one here. Uh, Jürgen, uh, Jürgen Saar, uh, <coughs> you're a master at uh, integrating young players into the first team. Just how proud are you of uh, Joel Quanta, especially after the clean sheets at Burnley and now Arsenal? These clean sheets, they are, they are good, absolutely, but it's the performance, it's... <laughs> Jarrell has um, played an absolutely outstanding preseason. So Jarrell is one of these one of these players where um, people knew that he's a real talent, um, but his real face he only showed in a moment when he really was close to the f when he became got close to the first team. Um, and since then he he played only good games in preseason. Every, each game was good. When he came on against Newcastle, it was outstanding in a really difficult game. Um, and from that moment, it's all it's all fine. It's 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 just really good. It's all not. I'm. It's I can only integrate into into the first team what the academy produces. So um, I think the amount of academy players at the Arsenal game, I think, was ten altogether. Yeah, that's actually a really a really nice thing. Um, 
So the academy produces players, but it's all about the players because even the academy cannot <coughs> perform miracles and um, yeah, make wonderful art out of a piece of wood. So they, 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 there must be some talent, and I, I love that when um, when these boys, there must not be scousers, but when it's on top of that, a scouser is, is even more fun. Um, but obviously we have players from different areas here in the region, so that will not be the ticket into the first team, but it's cool. And um, I think that what helps the most is the kind of the rise of Trent, Curtis, now Jarrell. That's what drives young players to see it's possible in a, in a top team in the Premier League or maybe in the world um, to make to, to get into. And um, yeah, it's good. Um, we are really happy about that, but obviously we needed it as well, so that's clear.